every one of us has been stopped cold by an obstinate issue that refuses to give way I dealt with this I dealt with that I dealt with the other but this kind there is not a single individual on the face of the earth. I don't care what you say. I don't care how sharp your suit is. I don't care how white your teeth are. There are certain things you cannot shift in your own power. And you need the power of God. You need the power of God. Welcome to Maximize Live, the television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. Welcome to another edition of Maximize Life. I am Michael Olaware, your host and the senior pastor of New Wine Church in Woolwich, London. Today we are looking at another life-transforming message by Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, the founding pastor of New Wine Church, London and my spiritual father who has gone home to be with the Lord. Today's message is titled, Fasting Today, Power Tomorrow. I'm sure it will encourage you. It will enrich you. And without fail, it will empower you. Stay tuned. Now, I want you to remember that Jesus had already given his disciples power over unclean spirits to cast them out. Go with me to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew 10, 1. Now, it's arguable which of these two events came before the other. We don't know. But just take a look at it with me. And when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. So these people already had power. Amen? In fact, they had power over unclean spirits. Amen? In fact, they had power over unclean spirits to cast them out. And we know that they walked in that power because if you read the same account in Luke chapter 10 from verse 17, the Bible says they came back rejoicing, saying to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we know that they walked in power. They cast out demons. Demons obeyed them. But then they came to this particular one demon and it will not budge. Are you seeing the point? It is possible to have the power but not know how to draw it. Amen? What happens to most of us? We wait until the big situation happens and then we want to draw a big dollop of power. And God says, no, you've got to operate in this thing on a regular basis. I have a feeling, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that they did it on the one occasion, but they were not constantly living in the power of God. And so they encountered one demon that did not obey them. Why? Because it was a stubborn one. Jesus called it this kind. Which kind? The stubborn kind. The obstinate kind, the difficult kind. Ask your neighbor for me, do you have this kind in your life? <laughs> ah, if you have been battled, stubborn issues in your life, it's time to shift those issues. Every one of us at some point in our lives or the other, every one of us has been stopped cold by an obstinate issue that refuses to give way. I dealt with this, I dealt with that, I dealt with the other, but this kind... I overcame this, I overcame that, I overcame the other, but this kind, I shifted this, I shifted that, I conquered the other, but this kind, in every one of our lives, there is a this kind. And Jesus said the only way it's going to go is when you supercharge your faith with fasting and prayer. Somebody say this kind. It's time to turbocharge your prayer with fasting. And that is what happens when you fast. The effectiveness of your prayer is intensified exponentially. Pastor Tayo, what are the mechanics? What are the dynamics? How does going without food make my prayer more effective? I don't know. 
and I can give you theories, but seriously, the bottom line is I don't know, but I know it works. I know it works. It's like trying to blow up a mountain with a hand grenade. You will kick up some dust. Of course, you will have some effect, but the thing will not shift. And that's what has happened to many of us. We've thrown tiny little hand grenades at the problem. Had a few dust in the air and thought, yeah, that's it. No, 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 no. There are certain mountains you need a nuclear missile to shift it. And that's what fasting does to your prayer. It turbocharges your prayer with nuclear power. Tell your neighbor, fasting today, power tomorrow. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you need the power of God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Tell them you can't do it on your own. There is not a single individual on the face of the earth. I don't care what you say. I don't care how sharp your suit is. I don't care how white your teeth are. There are certain things you cannot shift in your own power. And you need the power of God. You need the power of God. You need the power of God. You need the power. When you've done your best and it seems like your best is not good enough, you need the power of God. When you put all your strength into an endeavor and it requires more than all your strength, you need the power of God. When all your strength is gone and you have nothing more to give, you need the power of God. When you've toiled all night and you have caught nothing, you need the power of God. When you fought and fought and fought and fought and you are tired of fighting, yet you know the enemy you are fighting is not tired, you need the power of God. When it seems like the demons of your ancestors are now on your case, you need the power of God. When you try to pretend like it doesn't matter. But you know you can't ignore the issue anymore. You need the power of God. When a hurricane hits your marriage and threatens to shred it to pieces, you need the power of God. When a storm comes at your boat and threatens to capsize your boat and sink everything you've worked your entire life for, you need the power of God. When the devil gets in your face and tells you, I'm going to kill you, you need the power of God. When when the enemy overwhelms you, intimidates you, and it seems like your heart is overwhelmed and you can't take it anymore, you need the power of God. When your sweet little baby girl turns into this monster of a crazy, terrifying teenager, you need the power of God. When you struggled and struggled and struggled to overcome that sinful habit and it is tearing you to pieces on the inside and it's going nowhere, you need the the power of God. Tell somebody you need the power of God. Oh, I want to make you so hungry for the power of God today that you will not be able to return to business as usual. Our foundation scripture in Matthew chapter 6 is part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. In the first 18 verses of Matthew 6, Jesus dealt with three powerful Christian disciplines. Say them with me. Giving, Giving. Praying, praying, fasting. Now each of them on its own is a powerful entity. And in each case, Jesus promised that your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Verses 4, 6, and 18. When you give, there is an open reward. When you pray, there is an open reward. When you fast, there is an open reward. Each of them as an individual entity carries such awesome reward. Now imagine what would happen when you combine all three. Imagine. It is the power of synergy, potentiation, and exponential multiplication. And that's what we do in the month of fasting and prayer. We pray. We fast and we give. We're going to deal with that later. But here's the key, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus never for one moment assumed that these disciplines would be optional for his disciples. It didn't even cross his consciousness that they would think of whether or not to do it. He said, when you give, when you pray, when you fast, verses 2, 5, and 16 of Matthew 6, 
Tell your neighbor when, when, not if. He said, when you fast, not if you fast. He said, when you fast, not when you feel like fasting. He said, when you fast, not when you will feel led to fast. When you fast, end of story. This is something you are expected to do on a regular basis. Now, if truth be told, most of us listening today know that there is awesome power in fasting. We already know that we can turbocharge our prayers with fasting and with giving. But the problem is we wait until we're facing a desperate situation before we decide to fast to connect with the power of God. And then we fast and fast and fast and we wonder why nothing has happened. God does not want you to wait till there is an emergency. He wants you to make it a lifestyle. You see, Jesus said to his disciples, this kind does not go out by fasting and prayer. He didn't say to the father of that boy, go away for the next one week. Let me go and fast and pray. Then come back and I will shift the demon. Why? Because Jesus lived a life of fasting and prayer so he could move the situation. You must be living totally saturated, immersed in the power of God. Then when the situation arrives, you can produce on demand. Are you hearing me, people? The power is already available to you. You must learn to tap it. We brought power into this building before we put the appliances in. We didn't wait till the appliances came. Then we plugged it and then turned it on and said, oh, oh, okay, we need power. Let's go fast and pray now. Don't wait till you need the power before you draw the power. Let there be a reserve of power. In fact, when you get like that, the devil will know, don't mess with that one, oh. Are you hearing me today? I said, are you hearing me? Say it with me. Fasting today, power tomorrow. This is the word of the Lord. His house will be a house of prayer. Not just a house of singing and dancing. A house of prayer. And he says, if I arrive there, that's how I know if it's the correct address. If, I look, if you get to your house today, and your house is number 15, and all of a sudden you get there, it's now number 54. You will do a double take. You would think, this, this can't be my house. And God says, if I arrive and there is no prayer, then I'm at the wrong address. I will leave. This program will continue after this short message. I hope you have been blessed by this broadcast. If yes, I encourage you to contact me and let me know how we can serve you better. If you have any question about what you have heard on this program today or about life in general, do not hesitate to contact me. You can contact me by phone, email, or Twitter. All the details you need are on your screen right now. God bless you. Now, back to today's program. God is calling us back into a place of prayer. He's calling us back into a place of fasting. We have done too much and prayed too little. Jesus went from one place of prayer to the other and did ministry in between. We do ministry until we are drained and then we remember to go and pray. Tell your neighbor fasting today, power tomorrow. Turn with me your Bible to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Can I have you musicians up here? Verses 15 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord whip between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nation shall rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the invitation, people. This is the invitation. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Zion represents the house of God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. 
consecrate a fast call a solemn assembly ladies and gentlemen there is a place for corporate fasting there is a place for individual fasting and there is a place for corporate fasting there is a place for individual prayer and there is a place for corporate prayer there is a place for individual giving and there is a place for corporate giving and God says call a solemn assembly I am preaching this message for two sets of people there are some people every year when we call a sacred fast, when we call a solemn assembly, they turn away and pretend like this part of church life does not concern them. And they don't understand how much they're depriving themselves of the power that is available to them. And God says this year, don't turn away. Heed my call. Separate yourself. Humble yourself before me. Answer to the call of heaven and see what I will do in your life. For they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Too many children of God are weary. Too many are faint. Too many are falling by the wayside. Too many are not making it to their destination. Too many don't have the power to deliver. They are pregnant with promises and there is no strength to push out the baby because they have not learned to wait on the Lord. Don't turn away. You have been busy doing the same things you've been doing and you haven't moved forward in your life. Stop for once and heed the call of heaven. Call a solemn assembly. Call a solemn assembly. But I'm talking to a second set of people. And it's those of you who every year without fail, heed the call of heaven and set yourself apart to fast and pray. And God is saying, it's now time to learn how to tap into the power so that the fast is not just a religious experience for you. It is more than an experience. It brings about results. Somebody say results. Look at verse 18 and see the results with me. Ah, look at the first word in verse 18. What's the first word in your Bible in verse 18? Ah, say it like you got some fire. Yes. Say it again. Yes. Say it again. Yes. Oh, I love certain words in the Bible. I love, I love words like if. I love words like but. I love words like then. God says, if you do this, then I will do this. If you consecrate a fast, then I will do this. If you call a solemn assembly, then I will do this. If you gather the people and sanctify the congregation, then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil and you will be satisfied with them I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations but I will remove far from you tell your neighbor far from you the northern army and will drive him away into a barren and desolate land with his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea. His tent will come up and his foul odor will rise because he has done monstrous things. That's the demon that has tormented you. That's the demon that has intimidated you. That's the demon that has embarrassed and disgraced you. God said I will drive it far from you. You will see the back of that devil and you will no longer face him anymore. Ah, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Somebody say marvelous things. How many of you want to have that testimony in your life? The Lord has done marvelous things. It's enough. We have apologized for God enough. What is the Lord doing in your life? Um, you know, maybe, although, but still yet. No, 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 no. You have listened to other people's testimonies long enough. It's time for you to have your own testimony. The Lord has done marvelous things. Say it with me. The Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Somebody say faithfully. That word means moderately. God says everything you've experienced so far, 
is the moderate version. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he said, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat. And the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore. Somebody shout, I will restore. I will restore. Shout it again. Shout it again. This is the word of the Lord to you, new wine. I will restore everything the devil has stolen from you. I will restore everything you lost because of your foolishness. I will restore all the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust and caterpillar has eaten. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt with wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame then you shall know then you shall know then you shall know I am in the midst of Israel I am the Lord your God and there is no other my people shall never be put to shame ah and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on the men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. On the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, that promise became a reality. Peter stood up among the brethren and he said, this is that. Ah! Oh. When was the last time you looked in the Bible and looked somebody in the face and told them, this is that. Because the word of God has become your living reality. We should be living in the days of this is that. It's enough. We have read the Bible too long. We have read the Bible long enough. We have drooled over the promises long enough. We have claimed them long enough. It's time to point them out in our own lives. We must be the living, breathing, walking word of God. You want to know if the word of God is real? Look at my life. This is that. Now who here wants the power of God in their life? Who says, I need the power of God. Rise to your feet this morning. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to baptize you with the spirit of prayer and supplication. I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you to be all that you can be. If you have any question, comment, or prayer request about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen right now. And I will be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you happen to be in or visiting the London, Essex, or Kent area of the United Kingdom, we encourage you to come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, till the next time, on Maximize Life, God bless you. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. For more details about the dynamic ministry of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk.